This episode is brought to you by Baby Ethereus. You may have heard of Ethereus, the Ethereum mining income token, but Baby Ethereus is a hyper deflationary token on the BSC chain that provides great opportunities and rewards for Ethereus token holders. Baby Ethereus has gone from $300,000 market cap to over 5.7 million in one hour. Stake Baby Ethereus and get raffle tickets that enter you to win a 2022 Tesla Model 3. Visit babyaeth.com for more information. Link in the description below this my two satoshis this my two satoshis who need two cents when they can get double from stacking toshis yeah hola hola gg's my name is trucker ck's and this is another episode of my two satoshis and so i'm down in miami but i'm still you know keeping track of some new things and there definitely are some things that have come up across my radar contextually speaking i i think they're pretty relevant compared to what people are hearing come out of the main stage at um bitcoin miami as well as some of the other conversations I had, like I said, being down here, I was going to go to Monerotopia, um, what was all the, the shitcoin um, conference 2022. Shout out to Ken and the folks on that one. Learned some things there, met some cool people there. Monerotopia, the same thing. Met some cool people, had some good conversations, the networking and stuff. Let's jump into these stories and, you know, we go from there. So the first story I want to jump into, and honestly, when I was looking through this Forbes thing, I forgot how it caught my attention. Um, I wasn't actually looking at this story initially. I was looking at another story in relation to commentary that was out of the main stage, which you already heard about that stuff by this point, right? But nonetheless, um, the Queen Elizabeth treasure, Treasury reveals crypto assets fit in post-Brexit um, UK. If you don't know, basically the UK was like, hey, we don't want to deal with how the EU finance stuff goes anymore. Granted, technically speaking, UK economic system was not under the EU system. So they were already economically separate. But I'm not going to run down that rabbit hole with y'all right now. Nonetheless, here's what's going on. The way I read this article was that one, you know, Biden over here in the West, in the States, across the pond, we did our signaling about this whole crypto thing. Guess what happened? The other countries had to start doing their thing, right? I keep saying it. It's a, it's, it's a somewhat of a coordinated effort. If you read the IMF report um, that came out in October, as well as the OFAC report that came out, they kind of spell, spell all of this stuff out. That's the stuff I keep trying to convey to people. They're spelling out how they're going to look to move about in regulatory ways to suppress and throttle the adoption of cryptocurrencies until they can get a very effective handle on it. This to me counts as another example. Why? Because they're not talking about actually like implementing it. They're talking about first off, let's study it and let's figure out how we can integrate stable coins. We're talking about stable coins, people. We're not talking about Bitcoin. We're not talking about Ethereum. We're not talking about Avalanche. We're not talking about none of the other stuff. They're literally just looking at stable coins. And so it kind of has me wondering, um, would that be the path? And then like, does that mean that everyone has to deal? Well, speculation, speculation. This ain't um, price talking out of that, but it does bring into how they're going to look to uh, deal with it on their, their version of Wall Street, right? Are they looking to take the traditional things that are here right now, like Tether, like USDC, like the DAI? They don't even mention that in this particular article. And so there might be a little bit more digging that has to be done, um, or at least let some more time play out on like what direction they're actually trying to move in. And I'm be honest, I think this is more of a signal out into the public. Hey, the Queen's Treasury is now paying attention to cryptocurrencies, and we're specifically looking at stable coins. It doesn't mean they're actually going to do anything with the stable coins. There's no talk of regulation, regulatory changes or anything in here, but it's funny how they framed it where London or UK wants to be the center of, of crypto. How are you the center of crypto, but you're only talking about stable coins? It, eh, it don't work, or at least the way that the person wrote this article up, I honestly don't think they fully understand how the community, at least at my level, works. But that, was just my, that, that just might be me and my interpretation of this thing, right? Nonetheless, it basically was, like I said, Biden side signaled, now UK signaling. If you haven't been paying attention, there's stuff going on in Honduras, there's stuff going on in Indonesia, there's stuff going on in um, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, there's stuff going on in Pakistan. Another thing, and even in reading this article, uh, I did not know that this system right here, India has the largest platform which facilitates transmission of peer-to-peer -peer and vendor-to-peer and interbank 
um, per, like processes, right? All off of biometrics in regards to your thumb. It is amazing to me, and I'm gonna run off on a little tangent real quick. When you go outside of first tier countries like the US or like London or like France or let's say Canada, and you see some of the, the, the banking or monetary infrastructure setups that other countries have, that you'll be like, well, why don't we have that where I'm from? And we're in a, you know, a big name country. Why don't we have that? that I don't know the reason. All I know is some of the things that I've seen in other places really make me wonder. Anywho, jumping back. So now here you have it. The bottom line is they're signaling that they're looking to step into the space. And another thing that they talked about doing was that the um, UK's government has passed the the royal the UK's royal mint to make it NFT by the summer. I honestly, it was like, what is the execution on this? You, you can do it in five minutes if you just, you know, run up on um, up on OpenSea, like five minutes, you're done. Um, load up a picture, get it on IPFS, bam, y'all made an NFT. I think that the way this article is written, it's X amount of signaling. There's not necessarily an intention of let's do this good thing, but I think there's signaling in regards to some things that are gonna come down the line. And I'm gonna jump into this next article that kind of puts it more in perspective as to why I think certain things are being pushed out now and we'll see more happening over the coming months. This story right here, as far as the FDIC sounds alarm on crypto and letter to bank. And the basic thing of what this is article is, is saying is the FDIC wrote to the bank and said, hey, if you have the intentions of getting involved in this crypto thing, we think that you should, you know, really think about it because cryptocurrencies are unstable. So one, they're signaling and spreading FUD. I don't want to be the negative Nancy, but if you look at what's going on, it's a lot of FUD being spread out of governmental slash official channels right now. Why? Because this is a part of how you throttle and how you um, suppress adoption. You are, you spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And that's what they're doing in this article where it's like, well, you know, if people get involved in putting in their fiat money, the government money, right, into this thing called crypto that we don't have the right capital controls on, we can't interfere and interject and control the way that um, the markets would work or the economy would work because we don't have the right controls on it yet. That's the bottom line of what they're saying. First irony that really got me is in this particular article, there is no mention of how like the FDIC works as far as the insurance pool that the FDIC has for if something happens in a bank and you know when your bank has that little sign in the states that says it's uh, insured by FDIC. The, the caveat on that is it only takes one bank to go under for all of the money in FDI in the FDIC pool that they're supposed to help you know insure you on to be gone. So if Wells Fargo went under, if Bank of America went under, if Sovereign went under, the Bank of London or HSB, like any one of those type of banks went under, the whole budget is gone. And then on top of that, as a regular me kind of you person, you're not going to get your money back in what you think you're going to get it back in or in the time. That's the other part of it. The idea of what's being pushed out through the FDIC is basically put the fare on the bank. The banks are going to, um, you know, make their policies and how when people start coming and asking questions, oh, well, you know, we can't do that because of regulators. And they're going to toss the blame back up to them. But it's like, technically you could because there already are financial institutions that are making their inroads. And if you haven't been paying attention, FTX is saying, hey, we'll give you a million dollars in stable coins if you want to start getting into this crypto thing. I'm just saying the inroads are there, right? How I read this, the FDIC is trying to do X amount of pre-work in the, in the banking side for when you start really hearing about the recession. We haven't really had official announcements of recession, but depending on you know what type of news you're listening to and how you're cross-referencing the information, we're in a recession. It's just not officially acknowledged on the government side. That is what I think this is in part a counter to. Personally, that's how I think of it. Um, not saying you got to think of it that way. If you do have another opinion, you could definitely drop something in the comments and say how you really feel. I appreciate it. You can tell me I'm talking out my ass on this one. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the rest of the, uh, at the end of this year, in part because I think some people are getting, and I'm going to jump into this next story while I make this point. There are going to be bank runs 
and the institutions are still trying to figure out how do we curtail people from making bank runs. You spread news like that. That's what happens. And then when you try to do a run on the bank, they're going to be like, hey, we can't help you. We can't give you the money. But nonetheless, I'm going to jump into the next one. Um, this is a Zero Hedge story that I thought was kind of interesting as far as like, so basically China's Cyberspace Administration of China, CAC, is saying, hey, we need to start going through more of a, a crackdown or a regulatory examination of companies, big tech companies in particular, that are using abusive algorithms. So basically they're like, hey, if you're using algorithms that target people, but you're doing it in a way to like affect their personalities and like the overall societal cohesion, no, 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 no. I don't know how you say no in Chinese, but that's basically what this article is saying that the Chinese authority for cyberspace is looking to do. So they're basically gonna go after like Tencent, um, like WeChat, and if you don't know about WeChat, like it, it's a it's a beast of an app, right? You could do any and not any and everything, but it's definitely a fair amount of um, utility in that app compared to what Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, your banking app, and like your your digital information. All of that is in like one app, WeChat, and there's another a bunch of other things, but. The point being is that the government is looking at the companies and going, hey, you're having too much influence in the societal development. We don't like that. And this is just another example of like, you know, how the, the group hive mentality kind of works in regards to what China projects as how they like their stuff. Um, but it doesn't mean that the local and the individual, like the people themselves, they have their individuality, right? But they also like the system of so far as at least how it works for them. So they want to keep certain things in balance. You can definitely look more in on this, I, but I really did think it was interesting that that's the approach that they had of we're going to start going through and like, we need to see what your records look like or how you developed your um, algorithm codes for marketing and stuff uh, or for pushing products or services. I wonder why we don't have that. I don't know. But anywho, last thing, last thing is this story right here. And it's funny, it's not ha ha funny. This is not a ha ha funny story. But this is something that I've been thinking about for a number of years. And I was wondering when were we going to get back to where it's a part of the conversation for security, for secure, for physical security, cybersecurity, for, um, I guess, emotional security. And that Kraken talked about closing down their um, headquarters office in San Francisco because basically crime is getting kind of crazy out there. And the workers are the employees there. Sorry, no disrespect to y'all. Um, aren't safe because of how things are going. And in the bigger picture, right, this isn't just them. This isn't people specifically targeting a crypto company. This is just criminal activity is expanding. It is moving into areas that it traditionally was not in. And it's like this, like if you destroy the eating area of a wild animal, what does it do? It searches for a new area. This is the same thing that's happening right here where I would argue this is another type of validation of if you're seeing a spike in crime in either areas where they have crime or you're seeing it in new areas, that means something else is going on in your economy. Just saying, there are signs of what is going on in the economy. Just because you don't hear about it in the, in the public main narrative, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. I wonder if for this particular situation with Kraken, does this mean they're gonna relocate? And then for the bigger industry, because I honestly think this is going to have an effect because it's gonna happen more and more. Again, I'm of the school of thought in that, you know, we are in a recession right now, even though it's not being um, officially acknowledged, acknowledged via the government. And I mean, governments as far as local, state, federal, okay? Is this gonna change how companies do their locations going forward? Cause like right now we have this whole thing with the NFT movement about is it a dox team or is it an undox team, right? Um, I think this is gonna make a difference going forward in part because the, the criminal element is going to start targeting and not not just talking like scammers or stuff. I'm talking about the people who will do the brute force stuff. If if you just got here in 2020 um, and you don't know about like 2015 and 2016 when people was getting kidnapped in Russia and like there was home invasions, like yeah, it wasn't like 101 other things happening, but those things happened. And we're now in the second decade. There are a number of other circumstances for how the space is growing and how people are onboarding in compared to the first decade, 
we didn't have the things that we have right now so it's going to be interesting kind of scary interesting to see how things develop but nonetheless that's what it's going to be so i'm gonna close it out on that right there and say i hope everyone out there is being safe i hope everyone had a good weekend and just understand like just because you didn't hear it in the news it doesn't mean it didn't happen i'm trek with two k's this is my two satoshis and i'm closing it out on that one until the next one one